Since 1872, when this was the last word in warships, the Navy has maintained a proving ground to test and develop naval ordnance. The advent of the submarine and the airplane greatly increased the problem of testing and development and required new and varied facilities. The present U.S. Naval Proving Ground at Dahlgren, Virginia is 50 miles below Washington on the west shore of the Potomac River. This location was chosen because it provides a downriver range extending 90,000 yards, a distance of nearly 50 miles. The Proving Ground proper covers approximately 3,000 acres. It is named for Admiral John A. Dahlgren, father of Naval Ordnance. The present mission of this station is the research, evaluation, and development of many types of ordnance for the armed forces. Back in 1918, the first round of ammunition was fired at Dahlgren from this tractor mount, or firing table data. Today, modern weapons require more elaborate instruments to get the required accuracy. These velocity towers are a symbol of the accuracy and precision which the employees of this station strive to maintain. The coils which these towers support are pickup devices for magnetic signals which register on recording instruments, thus making it possible to measure projectile velocity, a major factor in the compilation of data for any range table. While firings for range tables are routine here, the operation requires effective coordination. One of the locations where major caliber guns are fired is the main battery. On the bridge of the main battery, the firing officer prepares to fire a range table program with a 5-inch 38 caliber gun. Out on the Potomac, the range boats stand by. They check their communication equipment. Above all, they make sure that the vast water area is clear of shipping and small craft for safety. Safety for men and material is the first order of the day. Along the shore at the spotter stations, where the shell splashes will be observed and their position recorded, the crews are being alerted on the day's program. Five-inch program, 41 rounds, elevation 15 degrees, line of fire 126. Back on the bridge, the firing officer and his assistant check the firing circuits and alert the men who will carry out the instrumentation. Personnel in the counter chronograph room are preparing to record and calibrate the data from the firings. The operators in the oscillograph room also stand by, ready to use electronics and photography to record the shell velocity of each firing. In the meantime, other preparations have been in progress. Before each firing program, the weapon is bore sighted. The coils are raised to the proper elevation corresponding with the angle of the gun barrel. In the projectile house, each projectile to be fired is numbered, measured with micrometer accuracy, balanced and weighed. Factors which must be taken into consideration in compiling ballistics data for any range table. Even the weather plays a part in a program of this kind. A radio in the balloon transmits information on conditions aloft to this radio sond receiver. This information makes possible a precise analysis of upper air conditions which will affect the shell while in flight. Back at the gun mount, the crew is preparing to load. Each shell must be magnetized before loading to register its passage through the velocity coils. As in all experimental tests, after executing the order to load, the crew retires to the shelter, for safety is a practice here, not just a slogan. On the bridge, the firing officer makes the final safety checks. The firing flag is up, the gates are down, the warning whistle sounds, Then he gives the order to fire. At the spotter stations, the crews hear, five inch on the way. 
In the oscillograph room, the velocity of the shell is being recorded photographically as it passes through the coils. Each spotter records the splash position in degrees and minutes, figures to be used later to triangulate the fall of the projectile. Back in the oscillograph room, the photographic strip is being developed. This strip is a millisecond time record of the projectile flight through the velocity coils. After the required number of firings has been completed, the compilation of data for the range table begins. One of the steps in compiling this data is performed on this brass relief map. This map is a scaled replica of the entire firing area, starting with the reference line, which is just below the firing bridge, and extending to the end of the water range, a distance of over 45 miles. Information from three or more spotter stations is on this sheet in the process of triangulation. The information which will ultimately be recorded on this sheet will be reduced to ballistic tables, which are vital to the solution of any fire control problem. Among the many responsibilities of Dahlgren is the evaluation of all types of aviation ordnance. These high velocity 50 caliber guns are being tested for possible jamming. Under ground firing conditions such as these, it is possible to examine the mechanism immediately for faulty performance. In this centrifugal chamber, a 50 caliber machine gun is being used for ejection performance. Approximately 30 Gs will be developed by the time this table reaches its top speed of 1150 RPMs. Equipment such as this is invaluable in the testing of items which are affected by high centrifugal forces when in operation. One of the most interesting devices for checking stress and strain is this aircraft catapult used to simulate service conditions of launching and arresting. This test is being conducted to determine the strength of the shackle for a 400 pound bomb. This shackle failure demonstrates the effectiveness of such testing techniques. This view of the operation was obtained by a camera mounted on the catapult. typical of anti-aircraft fire by a task force in World War II. Do you have any idea how many pieces of flying steel fill the air from each of these bursts? It sounds a little fantastic, but the boys at Dahlgren can tell you. Here in this weather-beaten building is the frag chamber. It consists of a pit 25 feet in diameter and 30 feet deep. In it, a projectile with an explosive charge weighing up to 10 pounds can be detonated. Preparations are underway to detonate a 5-inch projectile filled with about 7 pounds of high explosives and recover the fragments. As soon as the shell is secured and the detonation wires are checked, the pit is filled with sawdust. As the sawdust is poured into the pit, it is dampened with water. This reduces the fire hazard when the projectile is detonated. While the personnel hazard in this operation may be slight, these men do not take chances. That is one of the reasons why Dahlgren has an outstanding safety record. With the pit filled, the men retire to the shelter area. A remotely controlled camera made possible this view of the explosion. Now begins the tedious process of sifting every ounce of sawdust. Slowly the sawdust is released from the pit, passing from one sieve to another as the fragments, large and small, are recovered. The final step in recovery is this magnetic roller, which will recover those fragments which are too small to be caught by screening. The tediousness of the process does not end with a recovery of from 93 to 99 percent of the projectile weight. Each fragment is carefully weighed and sorted, for we are concerned with the size of the fragments as well as the total number. After the weighing and sorting has been completed, the percentage of recovery is determined by weighing each unit. In order to provide a visual record of each screening, all fragments are arranged in this manner. The caption shows the individual weight, the total number, and the total weight of the unit. 
This photographic record gives all the necessary information for an analysis of mass distribution of fragments of a five-inch projectile. Such analyses assist in the design of improved projectiles with greater destructive effects. Other fragmentation factors, such as velocity and velocity pattern, are determined by somewhat different methods. Hemisphere defense means maintaining operational efficiency under the most extreme weather conditions. This cold chamber is one of several controlled temperature and altitude facilities maintained at Dahlgren. This unit is capable of subjecting ordnance material to simulated altitudes of 50,000 feet and temperatures of between 70 degrees below and 125 degrees above zero. The value of such research is readily understandable in the light of our military commitment. Photography plays an integral part in many evaluation activities. Typical is this micro flash box by which the spin of a projectile can be determined. By firing a shell through this darkened box, these micro flash cameras will give exposures which show the rate of spin. An electronic timing device provides two light flashes as the shell passes through the box. The result is a still photograph like this. The velocity having been determined, the difference in position of the numerals on the shell from one picture to another establishes the rate of spin. Though tests of established ordnance items are vital, continued research and development is equally important if the weapons of tomorrow are to provide adequate security and effectiveness in the fleet. Applied research in the fields of electronics, ballistics, and instrumentation is constantly being conducted. Weapons of practically every description are fired under conditions of calculated adversity, more severe than they will ever meet in actual service. Firing 55 rounds per minute with this 3-inch 50 will provide valuable information on the erosion factor and the life expectancy of the gun barrel under such conditions. Facts on pressure and temperature as they relate to the firing cycle are being explored. The Armour Projectile Laboratory is completely equipped and departmentalized to perform research and development on all types of projectiles and armor. Among numerous activities within this laboratory are included determining the hardness pattern of a projectile, fabricating small numbers of experimental projectiles, and developing a new inert loading for rocket heads. In the development of bombs, warheads, and associated fuses, new techniques for research and test have been developed. A special installation for guns located close to the butts provides accurate impacts under carefully controlled conditions. Savings in test time and aircraft hours have resulted from this ingenious know-how. The use of this 8-inch smooth bore is representative of the activity in this field of research. Extensive research in anti-submarine armament has led to the development of more effective underwater weapons. The prototype rocket launcher Mark 108 is typical of the newer weapons being used by some units of the fleet. The autolites and telephoto cameras are used for recording flight characteristics of missiles and other data from which the exact trajectory can be calculated. This installation is one of several accurately located stations. Each station records simultaneously the exact bearing and elevation of a bomb or missile at a rate of four times per second. These high-speed tracking cameras are equipped with 40-inch telephoto lenses and a high-speed clock. A modified 20-millimeter gun mount provides for smooth and accurate tracking. The photograph obtained shows both the missile and the clock, which permits an exact evaluation of yaw and other flight characteristics versus time of flight. Under the protection of a special temperature and humidity controlled room are to be found such precision instruments as this circular dividing machine designed to produce graduated circles 
to an accuracy of one second of arc, such as required in the construction of high-precision instruments. One of the major computing facilities at Dahlgren is this Aiken Relay Calculator. An essential step in the preparation of firing tables is the reduction of accumulated data and the exploration of theoretical trajectories. These operations are handled as far as possible on automatic computing machinery. This equipment was initially intended for the extensive computation involved in the solution of ordnance problems. However, since it is suitable to other types of problems, urgent needs of other armed forces activities have resulted in ever-increasing use of these facilities. The addition of the electronic calculator, Mark III, has greatly advanced the capabilities of existing computing facilities. The speed and accuracy with which these machines solve complex problems is demonstrated by the fact that these 10 people must work almost an hour to complete computation which this machine can accomplish in less than one second. These large-scale calculating machines, together with the staff of mathematicians and electronic engineers, form the principal computation laboratory of the Bureau of Ordnance. The long rocket launcher is characteristic of the methods being used to solve some of the perplexing problems of trajectory and ballistics. 1050 feet in length, this launcher will take all types of thin and spin stabilized rockets from 3 to 16 inches in diameter. Tandem firing is employed which uses two or more motors to drive a single head at a velocity in excess of 1,200 miles per hour. The length of the launcher also provides straight trajectory, which makes possible accurate terminal ballistics tests. These, as well as the many other activities of this station, are indicative of the contribution Dahlgren is making to the science of ballistics and the effectiveness of naval ordnance.